Hey y'all, here we are with another lesson at Hummy's World in the blending mode class. And as I keep saying, just in case somebody stumbles upon these videos on YouTube or on my site, I encourage you to go back to the first lesson. Um, look for the guide on hummysworld.com and follow them in order. And if you have been following them in order and you're here now, Welcome back, and I'm so glad that you've been spending these fun times with me. Um, I have been having a lot of fun learning more about and, and thinking outside of the box with these blending modes. Okay, we're up to the pin light blending mode. And as we have said all along, it's all about the math. But I'm not going to calculate all the math. We're just going to give you a basic understanding. Um, we are, let's see, all the way down, we're doing them in order, all the way down to the pen light, which is the second to the last one in the contrast grouping. And we've learned that they're all contrast as we are going on um, doing each one because each one of them uses one of the lighten and one of the darken in part of their math. It combines them, and of course, dark versus light equal contrast. So um, the pin light combines the multiply and the screen, which we know the overlay and soft light does too, and, and those were real yummy, <laughs> but I'm not sure this one's quite as yummy, and it's a little bit more difficult. But the values greater than 50% gray in the upper layer, in the top layer, so that this is how it differs, that it only looks at the top layer before it calculates. So if, if the top layer has, um, wherever it has darker colors, that's where it's going to multiply. And wherever it has lighter colors, that's where it's going to use the screen. And um, doesn't really... Uh, consider the lower layer a whole lot. So let's look at what it's going to do. Here's our graphic that we've been following along and this one you're going to see is a little bit funky. <laughs> look at that. A large area is unaffected. A very large area from 50% gray to way out here and way out there and much different than the other ones and they both are kind of really um, gray I mean there's no true white and there's no true black except for maybe on the very very tippy tops tippy edges is that a word far extreme edges and uh, so it really gives a different effect and it's it makes it a little bit more difficult to play with but yeah, I know you can do it so here is my sample and what I ended up with don't know why that blank spot is coming in that's funky so <laughs> here's what I ended up with don't grow up it's a trap and I found uh, this photo we're going to deconstruct and reconstruct of uh, the grass that I took out in my yard and I thought this is a really cool picture of grass you can see um, the folk this real sharp here and then we've got um, as we go out both ways well uh, that's called depth of field it gets more blurry but um, that would be the photography class go take that one so we are going to reconstruct this and um, in order to do that let me get uh, uh, the texture layer oops I deleted the wrong thing let's just delete the mask don't apply the mask just delete um, let me get it back to normal <laughs> there's the texture normal texture it's kind of fun I chose the green one um, just because I had green grass I don't know what you might want to play with it with different colors 
and I'm going to tell you it's going to be just like this not changing the color a whole lot wherever it blends <laughs> I'm going to tell you that's what it does so um because if you're using it as the top layer that's what it does and uh we're going to zoom in and you can see it's got these yummy this paper's kind of yummy some papers are not so yummy it's got all these kind of funky swirly things and it's got some paint paint splatters and and light splatters and dark splatters and and brush strokes everywhere and it just it, that one's kind of yummy that one turned out pretty well um some of our textures are ugly but we still make beautiful things with them so everybody's going to get this texture and everybody's going to be using the pen light and no other and so we are going to make it into the pen light and you can see what happens um, where it's uh, darker on this texture you see that that's showing up like in here see this real uh, dark areas are showing up and where it's lighter than what's beneath it it, it is uh, showing up all that white yumminess and it's kind of cool it's almost like you're looking through a frosted glass um, because even the areas uh, let's see before and after you see even these areas are kind of hazy so um, of course it all depends on what your image is below but that was just a little bit too much for me so here's what I did I lowered the opacity a little bit I think I had it on 78 and then I said, but, you know, I love this bright green. I want it back. I want it back. And so, but I want to, of course, leave some of my fun texture, too. So I added a layer mask and black reveals, white conceals. Um, go back to other lessons at Hummies World if you need that reinforcement. So right now it's all white. It's all showing. And I want to conceal it. And I got... A brush um, I think it's just a, a grungy brush that I have and I don't remember what I picked out but then I just started you know oh where's my text there's my text layer and I really wanted it to um, you know be I, I didn't like all this in the background I wanted that to be covered up but I wanted it to be green grass a whole lot around uh, the um, actual text. I wanted to see some of that great green. And uh, this brush actually is uh, fairly opaque, so I had to do it quite a bit. And then I went back because I got too much of this and I wanted to hide that up there. Then um, you see I got two layers with my pictures down here. I did not like this up here. I wanted that to be all green. See, that's a, a building in the background. So I went ahead and duplicated my layer. And I got my clone tool. And there are other lessons at Hummies World. I'm not going to go into using how to use the clone tool. But I selected, held down my Alt key, and I selected an area over here. I kind of looked at how it blended, and I wanted this kind of blending. And I just, you know, blended over that until it disappeared. So I'm going to get rid of this one we just were playing with and show you my uh, final there. And um, the same way with this new... Um, uh, layer that we made and I'm going to make this one visible so this we're back to my original that I did um, for the text now uh, the text is actually uh, was not so much anymore it was <laughs> at one time it was blending a little bit more but um, I went ahead and the text layer is actually a pin light mode if you change it back to normal you see it's uh, very dark uh, a dark green and um, then I went to pin light um, 
And I think it's my shadow, maybe, that's keeping it from blending in more. Down here, it could be just the blending mode. You can see it's blending in a little bit more down here. You can see the grunginess of the text of the grass coming through. And so I changed it to a blending mode, but then I had to actually um, go and select my text and click around because you see up here, that's what it did. Oh, there we go. That's pretty cool. See right in there, you can see the text really coming through. Um, you know, you could do that. You notice it's more in the neutral, 50% gray area. There you go. That's pretty good. It's really getting it blending. But the darker you go or the lighter you go, the less it blends. That's the same, you know, playing with the text like this, I think, helps you understand how the actual texture layer is working and what kind of color that the texture layer, what kind of... Um, saturation or lightness or darkness it needs and uh, so I did that with it until I came up with a color I liked and um, it actually blended in better I think before I added the stroke layer and because we are using the pin light I changed it to the pin blending mode and then I played with the color once again and it was the same thing um, going back and forth trying to see how it blended in and of course I wanted something light but so that uh, the text would pop uh, but yet not too light um, I wanted it my purpose of the the um, stroke was to make my text readable to bring contrast so I I ended up I going for some of these lighter colors that blended in up here and then for the drop shadow, it's a multiply. Um, it's a normal drop shadow. And I actually just reached out here and grabbed it and moved it around until I thought it looked good. So, whoops. Uh, then I said, well, okay, we're doing good, but there's still nothing to like tie it all together, to bring it all together. And so here's what I ended up doing to uh, make it even more artistic. I got my rectangular marquee tool, went out right to the edges. Now you have to kind of eye this. Uh, you know, you could do other methods to make it perfect. Made a selection right around the edge. And then I changed my selection tool to subtract from selection. And I went in and I got real close and I did it again, just kind of eyeing it. And now I have just a selection of a line around. And I am on my uh, layer. Uh, this one is actually not being used. This is the one that got cloned. This one I'm saving, tucking away in case I want to redo the original. So I have my layer that I'm working on. And I hit Control J, and it makes this uh, border. And I said, "Okay, we're playing with the pin mode. I can only use the pin mode." And so I hit the pin mode, and no change. Ah, but you go back here, and you remember that you know it's only affecting the top layer. Ah, huh, okay. So let's make it above and see what happens. Aha! Now I'm getting somewhere. Look, it's kind of cool over here. It's, you know, but then, but it's not quite there. And so I hit control U to bring up the hue and saturation. And I started playing. And when, when you got lighter, you know, you got, I could have gone this way. But I, I liked the way it looked when I went darker. Because remember, this, this one's all about darker and lighter. And I hit somewhere in here, and now you can see the original, you know, colors of the grass coming through. And I thought, aha, now it's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And here's my original that I had made, uh, where I took a little bit more time making the the border a little bit better. 
So um, you can see how all the way around, because of the color I chose uh, that that is blending in with the pin light, that it, um, it like almost cuts through the texture and, and shows the original. I just thought that was really cool. Now if you bring it below, you see it doesn't do that. And bring it above and you see it does that because it's blending, it's looking only at the upper layer. And so that is kind of one of the really, really cool tricks that you can do with the pin mode, knowing that it's really only looking at the upper layer. And uh, that made it pretty cool. So there's my final image. And I hope you take these tips and do something cool. I don't know. I feel like I keep doing the same thing with the borders and the frames. But, you know, it's it's similar but yet yeah, different with each one and um, you have to take these little tips and apply it to your own images and maybe remember one from a previous lesson and apply it to this one and or remember what that particular blending mode does go out have fun it's so much fun to see everybody's image using the same texture and the same blending mode, no other textures, no other blending modes, and uh, show me what you can do. Bye.